Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining ETAR online webinar. Also, I want to thank our uh, uh, keynote speaker, uh, Professor Aziz uh, Jafar, to accept my invitation and be a part of ETAR uh, group. This webinar will be uh, 45 uh, minutes and then we'll open the floor for any question. You have two types to, uh, to ask uh, Professor Aziz uh, your type in the Q&A below the screen or you can just raise your hand and we'll go one by one to ask uh, Professor Aziz uh, your question. This is me, Dr. Ahmed al Gattan, the founder of uh, ETAR Group. This webinar will be live in uh, YouTube. Professor Aziz is a professor of accounting and head of accounting and finance at Bangor Business School in Bangor University in UK. He has more than 25 years of experience in tertiary education. As his research interests are in the areas of international accounting, financial reporting equality, CSR and tax avoidance. His research Work has appeared in many international high-ranked journals, such as Journal of Corporate Finance, Abacus, International Journal of Accounting, a British Accounting Review, Journal of Economic Behavioral and Organization. International Review of, fi of Financial Analysis, Journal of Financial Services, Research and European Journal of Finance. He is co-editor in chief of Journal of Financial Reporting and Accounting. Associate Editor of Journal of Islamic Accounting and Business Research and Member of Editorial Board of Journal of Accounting in, in uh, Emerging Economics. Uh, Professor Jaffer has audit and, man and management consultations experience whilst working with one of the big four accounting firms, and he is a member of CPA Australia. Thank you so much, Professor Aziz, to be part of, uh, of ETAR and accepting my invitation. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. Let me share my screen now. Hello everyone, depending on your location, good afternoon or good evening. Thank you again, Dr. Ahmad al Khatan, founder of ETAL Group for inviting me to present today. And thank you everyone for attending this session. Uh, I'm Aziz Jafar, I'm Professor of Accounting at Bangor Business School uh, here in Wales. For those of you who have not been in Wales, okay, uh, let me show you Bangor location. It is a two hour drive from Manchester and 3.5 hours by train from London. And this is my workplace, Bangor Universities, uh, established back in 1884. Uh, the main building here is the main arts building located on top of the hill. And this is inside of the main arts building, okay? 
So the topic of my presentation today is on building a successful research and academic career. And this presentation is aimed at doctoral students or early career researchers who like to embark on or at the initial stage of academia. In this session, I will be discussing my experience as an academician for the past 25 years, and I will share useful tips which would benefit you, as well as mistakes that I have done in the past so that you will not repeat the same. More importantly, after all these many years in academia, I'm still developing my career, trying new things, new ideas, working with different people, and I'm yet to be successful. So building a successful academic career is a journey, okay? It's a process, it's a long race. So how do we maintain the energy and motivation? So let me begin by sharing my own research or academic journey. I completed my PhD in accounting and finance in 2005. And my PhD thesis focuses on uh, international uh, <coughs> corporate reporting and financial reporting quality. And during my PhD, I was a research associate in the EU Harmonia Research Network. And this is funded by the European Union. Uh, this research network provided me opportunities to connect with and learn from well-known researchers in this area. And as part of the network, I presented my research work in many conferences and received constructive and excellent feedback. And after my PhD, I joined Bangor Business School as lecturer in 2006. And my first promotion is in 2013 as senior lecturer and as professor in 2016. In terms of uh, administrative position, okay, I'm currently head of accounting and finance. Okay, in the past, I'm director of graduate studies in charge of PhD program and Deputy Director of Center of Impression Management in Accounting Communication. I publish, as uh, Dr. Ahmad mentioned, in many uh, accounting and finance journals. Okay? And beside Bangor, I have taught at Aberystwyth uh, in Malaysia, in China, as well as in Germany. I have uh, supervised uh, doctoral students, nine completed, and now I have three PhD students in progress. I've also examined PhD thesis in many institutions, including Glasgow, Birmingham, Harriet Ward, Dundee, Portsmouth, Auckland, as well as in Malaysia. And I have reviewed grants application here in the UK, uh, the ESRC, Liverpool, as well as a social research grant in Canada. So the main objective, the main question here, what do you think are the key factors in building successful research or academic career, okay? So what do you think are the key factors? I have list down a number of key factors here, okay? So a number of dimension, a number of factors can be used to measure successful in academic career, okay? We can start with teaching, okay? And this involves innovation as well as student satisfaction. And this become more important during the current uh, pandemic, the 
current uh, COVID-19 has forced us to move more and more uh, using the online or blended learning. So the ability to adapt and innovate is very crucial in ensuring high quality teaching. Okay. Secondly, the number as well as quality of publication. Okay. Research and publication are important indicator. So are you focusing on the number or quality or both? And I will discuss this in more depth, more in depth later. Okay. The third dimension is uh, PhD supervision and completion. So as part of a research career or academic career, we are expected to supervise doctoral students or research students. So for me personally, I find this both interesting and motivating part of my job as it provides me opportunities to engage and mentor doctoral students. Another important dimension is research grants, okay? Uh, grant capture is becoming more and more important esteem indicator. Uh, research impact, okay? what is the implication of your research on society, industries, okay? public policies. Okay? And if you like to be in administrative, okay, the university admin ladder, becoming head of school, dean, deputy vice chancellor, or even vice chancellor. Okay. Uh, another dimension is work-life balance. Okay. This is very important. Okay. Um, <clears throat> because by having work-life balance, okay, it makes you more productive, enjoy your work, as well as improve your health and well-being. And last but not least, okay, ethics. Okay. Do you think there is a right way, uh, right way to behave towards your fellow colleagues? Okay. Uh, basically, you know, the strategy here are being helpful or competitive or selfish. Okay. I mean, for me, I believe in being helpful because uh, you get back more than what you give. Okay. Or the multiplier effect. So first, we need to understand the context, okay? And in understanding the context, okay, we have to, um, <clears throat> to understand that no one size fits all academic, depending on location, de depending on the university that you work with, okay? You need to understand the game, okay? So broadly speaking, Okay. If we were to uh, look at the type of universities, there are two types of university, university which are focused on research or university which are focused on teaching and scholarship. So you need to understand your institutions. Okay. For example, here the U in the UK, okay, we have different types of university, the Russell Group, the pre-92 or post-92 universities. Okay. So that is important because by understanding the institution that you work with, you know the objective, okay? And what it takes to achieve this objective. Secondly, in terms of career progressions, okay? You start off as a lecturer, okay? Uh, then promoted to senior lecturer in some institution, okay? They use this uh, term associate professor, okay? And then reader, and then professor. So if you are purely in research, okay, um, <clears throat> the title is slightly different. Okay, you start off initially as postdoctoral, as research, then goes to research officer, research fellow. Okay, and then the next step is senior research fellow, then principal research fellow. <clears throat> So in terms of uh, promotion or progression, okay, in order to progress to uh, advanced stage of your career, okay, 
you will need to demonstrate the evidence of significant progression. Okay? And this is a combination of research publication, research grant, okay? your contribution to teaching and learning, as well as administrative and external engagement. So in principle, there are different tracks for promotion, the research and scholarship track, as the term suggests, okay? uh, it focuses on uh, your research achievement. Okay? Uh, the second track is teaching and scholarship track. So here, instead of research, okay, the focus is on teaching. Okay? And the third, track is wider contributions uh, track, okay? So <clears throat> the key factors, I've listed here some of the key factors, okay? This is not exhaustive. I'm pretty sure there are many other factors, but I would like to discuss these factors in detail, okay? So the first key factors is publish or perish. Okay, I'm pretty sure you have come across this terminology. Okay, if you publish, you will become visible. Okay, it will enhance your reputation. Or if you don't publish or perish, then you will vanish. Okay, nobody's know. Uh, uh, no, nobody know you and your work will not be cited, will not be shared by fellow academic. Okay? So in the context of, of academic freedom, okay, I'm sharing the UK experience. Okay? Uh, I'm sure this theme is also emerging in other uh, jurisdiction in other countries. Okay? So here in the UK, okay, prior to the current research excellence framework, or the REF, okay? academic has uh, more uh, research autonomy. Okay? You can publish anywhere you like. Okay? You have a lot of flexibility, okay? a lot more freedom in terms of research and publication. So post-REF, the last REF is 2014. And the current ref, okay, uh, in fact, as I speak, okay, uh, we are submitting, submitting to current ref, which is this year, 2021, okay. So what is the implication of this ref? It increased the pressure to publish, okay. And it also used as a, a basis to rank department, okay. Uh, rank journals, okay, here in the UK, we have this Chartered Association of uh, Business School. They provide a journal ranking list. It also serves an, uh, as an indicator of impact factors. Okay. And it also um, <clears throat> exert political pressures on higher education. Okay. What does it mean? Your research work will enhance your department reputation as well as your university's visibility, and these will attract more funding. Okay. So all in all, okay, you either meet or beat the key performance indicators. Okay. So what are the requirements for you to uh, pass your probation okay, to get your tenure, okay, to progress in your career? You need to understand, you need to be aware of all these requirements. Okay? And the quality and the quantity of your uh, publications, okay? it would be good if you can do both, okay? publishing not only quality papers, but also okay? um, <clears throat> in terms of quantity. And, and it's difficult. And this depends again on uh, your institution. Some institution put a target of three or four papers in, uh, uh, in, in one year, in a couple of years. Okay? Uh, but at my department, at my school, okay, quality is 
far more important than quantity, okay? Publishing in four star or three star journals, okay? Is better than publishing four or five papers in one star journals, okay? So you need to understand uh, your institution's uh, demands and requirement. And the quality of your research work would enhance your reputation, would enhance your visibility, and these would also enhance the ranking of your department. Okay. So if you are still doing your PhD, okay, or just completed your PhD, okay, you would understand that PhD is a research apprenticeship okay, or research training where you learn the trade of research, okay? How to conduct review of literature, uh, conducting research methods, analyzing data, presenting and discussing your results, articulation, articulating your uh, contributions, okay? And understanding uh, what is the current research debate in your field, okay? There's more and more emphasis uh, upon quality referred journals, as I mentioned to you just now here in the UK. We use the CABS uh, journal ranking, okay? Uh, in Australia, they, they have these other lists, uh, the ABDC list, okay? Or the Q1 or ISI Scopus Index, okay? So you need to understand all these different general ranking. And finding the right home for your research work. Okay. Uh, know what is the current debate okay, and the literature. Okay. Who are the key players in the field and uh, what's their perspective? Okay, what's their view? Okay. So in doing so, you, you, you need to build your research reputation as well as specialism, being able to bring new conversation or new contributions and learn the big debate in the field. For example, in my field, international accounting and financial reporting quality, okay, what is the recent debate in terms of measuring or estimating the proxy for uh, uh, earnings quality, okay? We also, as, as researcher, we also need to, be, to, to build research network, okay? Attend conferences, okay? In other words, you need to be able to connect and collaborate. By connecting and collaborating, okay, you will find new ideas, okay? Uh, you also find new perspective from your co-authors. So it's good to collaborate your work, right? And mentoring, uh, you know, uh, working your, with your supervisors as well as a senior colleague in my case, okay? Uh, I, I'm mentoring my PhD student as well as a junior colleague in my department. Okay. Another publication strategy or research strategy is, uh, uh, is to practice and in particular, okay, uh, polishing your writing skill. Okay. Uh, you write to communicate your ideas. It's not only about correcting grammar, but how we communicate our ideas you know, uh, accurately. Okay. And be proactive. Don't hide in your shells. Okay. Present your work in very in different conferences. Okay. And how your work impact the outside uh, academic world, the practitioners, media, uh, and uh, the public. Okay. So in doing this, okay. You have to be patient and perseverance, okay? Because uh, 
this is very competitive uh, field, okay? And rejection of your paper is a norm, okay? I received many and many rejection. You cannot believe how many rejection I received in the past many, many years, okay? So how to mitigate this, okay? Uh, get the paper circulated with comment from your supervisors, from colleagues, from critical friends, okay? You will need to test your ideas. You need to test your contribution, okay? Repeatedly and rigorously, okay? Present your papers in many conferences, okay? And get feedback, okay? In doctoral colloquium, in uh, academic conferences, okay? Go to good academic conferences, okay? Specialist academic conferences, and you will get feedback. And work on the feedback, revise and polish and polish again. So it is an iteration. Okay, for one paper, you could be like writing draft for many, many times. Okay. And you need to know when to submit. Don't rush a submission because okay, of there is a high possibility that it will get rejected, especially if you submit to high quality journals, okay? And when you write your paper, okay, you need to know a specific journal in mind, okay? So if you are doing something on uh, accounting and finance, you need to be able to uh, understand, okay, which perspective, which potential journals we uh, would accept your work. Okay, because different journals has different styles, has different scope. Okay, uh, some journals are more empirical, other journals are more theoretical. Okay, and other journals accept both empirical as well as theoretical work. Okay, so If you are still doing your PhD or just completed your PhD, okay, writing a PhD thesis is different than writing a, an academic paper. Okay, it requires a different set of skill and different approach, and especially in terms of crafting your contributions. Okay, if you were to submit your work to high quality journals, then contribution is very important. Okay. Secondly, the structure as well as the style of writing okay, for PhD, okay, because PhD is an extended, extended work, okay, so it can be very detailed, very in-depth. Okay. But for a paper, there is a work limit. So you need to be able to communicate your ideas accurately, succinctly. Okay. And you also need to know the, the target journals because as I mentioned just now, different journals has different uh, style, okay? So for example, if you like to submit your paper to British Accounting Review, okay? Look at recent paper that published in that journals, okay? And as I mean, investigate, analyze the style of the writing, okay? So, <clears throat> A lot of PhD now is done using three papers rather than the conventional PhD. Okay, the three paper approach uh, would make your life slightly easier, okay? Because you have uh, particular topics, okay? Uh, and the topic is already being sliced into paper, okay? So the structure is there. <clears throat> So usually from, from PhD, okay, you can, uh, you know, the, the three papers approach allow you to generate uh, three papers, uh, publishable papers, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and the timing of uh, these papers uh, is also crucial, okay? Uh, because it is uh, becoming more competitive now, okay? It is uh, advisable to uh, publish paper towards the end of your PhD because it will uh, provide a positive signal to the employers 
that not only you're able to complete your PhD, but also writing a good or high quality papers. Remember I mentioned to you, these two uh, writing PhD and writing a papers are two different skill set. Okay. And in targeting the right journals, uh, you need to do some homework. Okay. When you uh, write your papers, okay. Look at the potential journal outlets. Okay. Who sit in the editorial board? Okay. What is the journal ranking? What are the aim and scope of the journals? Okay. And uh, as I mentioned, some of these journals focus on empirical, others in theoretical. So if you are, if your papers or if your research is empirical, okay, do not send to uh, journals which focus on theoretical work and vice versa. Okay. And the length of the paper, because there is a word limit, okay. So usually it's between 10 to 12,000 work. Okay, as opposed to your PhD, if, uh, each empirical chapter is possibly uh, 24,000 words. So how do you condense this 24,000 words uh, into half? Okay. And I, as I mentioned to you just now, okay, uh, you need to find the connection. The, what is your contribution? Okay? How do you contribute to the uh, current debate? Okay. And last but not least, the, 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 the house, the journal style, okay, uh, certain uh, journal have a very specific style. And if you uh, do not uh, follow the journal style, you may suffer desk rejection. For example, okay, if you submit to Emerald uh, journals, okay, they have a structured abstract, okay, the objective of the paper, okay, the finding, the research implication, the limitation, the contributions, okay? As opposed to uh, other journals, everything is uh, in one paragraph, okay? So in any paper as um, <clears throat> an editor, the first question that I will ask when I review a paper, okay? is what is the novel contributions? Okay. What is the incremental contribution of the paper? If you, do, if you are unable to demonstrate the contribution of your paper in the introduction section, okay, then most likely or very likely that you will suffer a death rejection. So you know what is this re rejection? Okay. This is a uh, rejection of a paper without even uh, <clears throat> circulating it to reviewers. Okay. So in any papers, in any uh, research work, think about your contributions. Okay. What do you contribute to the big debate? Okay of what is different about your paper, okay? In terms of theory, in terms of methodology, in terms of a new set of data results, okay? The implications, okay? These are the different dimension of contribution. So you need to make yourself clear, okay? What is that that you contribute in the papers, okay? And how do you advance the knowledge and debate within your field? Okay. And all this need to be clear in the introduction section. Okay. Now, the second point I mentioned just now is networking or collaborating. Okay. This is important. Okay. Yet it can be daunting because you know working with someone. Uh, working with key co-authors, you need to, 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 to be able to accommodate okay, and organize your schedules. Okay? 
But there, there are a lot of benefit in networking as well as collaboration. Okay. So first, it complements your research skill, your research interests. Okay. We are human, we are limited. Okay. So by collaborating, okay, you can uh, <clears throat> benefit okay, and you can also contribute to your co-authors in terms of complementary complementing the research skill, the, uh, you know, all these different skills that needed in crafting a high quality papers, okay? And especially if your research work is interdisciplinary, okay? So you are connecting, for example, okay, your discipline in accounting and finance to marketing, to business management, okay? So it is <clears throat> beneficial to get a co-author from that particular discipline because you can borrow a new uh, theoretical framework or new uh, methodology in uh, analyzing your data and so on, okay? So how do we improve the, our ability to network, okay? First, okay, uh, develop a positive attitudes, okay? Uh, towards meeting potential contacts, okay? If you go to seminars, to uh, <clears throat> conference, okay? Make new contacts, okay? Uh, do research and identify key or main authors in your field, okay? These can be your potential collaborators, okay? And develop your own professional and research network, okay? Uh, if you do not have Google Scholar, LinkedIn, academia.edu, or ResearchGate, okay, this is where you uh, <clears throat> uh, publish or, or, or uh, <clears throat> advertise yourself, okay? Attend the right conference, okay? And ask yourself who knows your work beyond your own universities and research group. And find uh, event outside in your universities, uh, attend conferences, and so on. Okay. Now, another important dimension is time management. Yes, in academic, uh, our working pattern is very flexible. Okay, it's not a regular nine to five jobs. Okay, but the downside. Okay. It can be all consuming efforts. If you do not know how to uh, <clears throat> schedule uh, your time management, okay, either you're not doing sufficient amount of work or you're doing too much. Even at night, 12 o'clock at night, you're still uh, reading research papers. I'm not saying that wrong, but you know, of you need to be able to structure your time, okay? In other words, okay, uh, be able to juggle uh, these different commitments, okay, research, uh, teaching, as well as uh, administration, administrative commitments, okay? And all this can pull you in different directions, okay? And usually, and most of the time, your research, okay, uh, responsibility or research work is the least priority, okay? You need, usually you will fulfill these other commitment first, okay? Your teaching, marking, okay? Uh, your uh, administrative duties, okay? That leave research work or research commitments, okay? As residual, okay? Because this is something that you can always defer, okay? And it is important to have uh, time management and you allocate a specific time for your research, okay? And these will enable you to work on new articles, new papers, new grant captures and so on. And <clears throat> this is also important, okay? Being able to be resilient. Okay. What do I mean by resilient? Okay. Uh, not only you need to be hard work, okay, hard working, okay, active and self-discipline. Okay. <clears throat> this field 
okay, is very competitive, you will receive a lot of rejection. Okay, a lot of rejection for your work. So if you shrink at a mere hint of uh, critics of your work, you will receive a lot of critics. Okay, in my many many years, I received a lot of uh, <clears throat> negative comments from uh, reviewers, from editors. Okay, some of paper, my papers take uh, you know two years or even three years before it get published. Okay? So if you are not resilient, okay, uh, you know, you can easily give up and academia may not be the right uh, <clears throat> career for you. Okay? And we always welcome a constructive critique, okay, criticism as, as a way to learn and improve when you present your papers at a conference. You receive comments, okay. Some of these comments, you know, are useful for you to get uh, to take on board. Okay, you, you submit papers and get rejected many, many times. Okay. And the process of publishing papers okay, is iterative. You write many and many drafts before uh, it gets published. So Resilient is very important. Another point is presentation skills. Okay. Being able to communicate your ideas, be a good public speaker is important. Okay. And this is also essential for teaching as well as presenting your work at conferences. Okay. Uh, you need to be able to present your work in a confident manner and articulate your ideas, your point. Okay. And, you know, in, in teaching scenario, a lot of us are required to teach uh, subject modules. And at the end of the semester, we receive it back on our uh, teaching assessment. So lecturing or delivering Lecture is a big part of uh, academic job. So you need to think whether you are happy to speak in public. Initially, you know, is 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 a is a daunting task. But as you practice, okay, uh, this will become a uh, second nature. Okay. Another dimension of uh, academia is uh, leadership and management. Okay, uh, this is an important dimension of uh, academic success. Okay, so you need to start to develop as a leader in your research field by taking up opportunities for project management training while you are completing PhD. Okay, uh, supervise undergraduate or master's project. Okay. Uh, you can set out, seek out opportunities to use your initiative and take a lead. Okay. Uh, even if you are collaborating with someone else's project, okay. uh, organizing seminars for uh, external speakers in your field, okay. organize uh, regional or national conference. So these are all uh, you know, skills required for leadership and management. Okay. And finally, which is equally or most important, okay, is the work-life balance. In other words, have a life. Okay. So you need to have a proper prioritization between your work, okay, your career, okay, your ambition, and lifestyle. Okay. And this includes your health, okay, your leisure and family. Okay, and this is important because otherwise you become insane. Okay, so how do we maintain a healthy and positive work-life balance? Okay, while being a successful academic, you know, there's different approaches. Okay, uh, this is difficult, but you know you, you you need to give it a try. Okay, creating a realistic boundaries between 
work and non-work items. Okay, don't bring your work at home. Now is even becoming more uh, difficult because a lot of us are working from home. Okay, so how do we separate between uh, you know, our work as well as other activities? Okay, uh, you also need to prioritize tasks. Okay. Uh, check what uh, to do list and then complete the tasks, uh, the required tasks, and then set aside a time for, for you and your form, uh, family. Okay. So this is very important because it provides benefit okay, by having a work life balance. Okay. It helps help us to be more productive. Okay. Uh, it also improves our health and well-being. Okay? More importantly, enjoy your work and stay focused. Okay? And you will stop missing out because a lot of academicians, they are too focused in their work. Okay? They ignore all other, uh, <clears throat> all other things that surrounding them. Okay? And, you know, of as much as possible, avoid that. So that's my presentation. Okay, uh, I'm happy to take questions and queries. And let's hand up uh, the presentation back to Ahmad. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Aziz, for interesting uh, webinar. Actually, it's one of the best uh, webinar I ever uh, heard here in ITAR. Uh, we all in so in PhD or you know in early career, most of the questions that I heard, what is the ABDC? What is the difference between ABDC and the Scobus and uh, ABS and you know uh, this stuff? Also. I know many of uh, colleagues ask, um, what is the position in the uh, uh, the positions levels or steps in, in Middle East? And what is the difference between America and UK uh, regarding, you know, the lecture, senior lecturer, readers, and, you know, uh, professor, and how they can jump from lecturer and the professor here in UK. And also in, uh, in uh, what is the balance, uh, position in UK and in, in Kuwait, let's say, or in GCC or in Middle East. So for example, as you said, the lecturer is as assistant professor and senior lecturer as uh, associate and reader as associate and so on. So it's good to know uh, those information. And I really like when you said, uh, know uh, your career and also know uh, what you need uh, to, uh, uh, to continue your, your career regarding, you know, the research and, you know, the uh, career uh, work. So uh, I really want to thank you, Professor Aziz, for uh, interesting uh, and useful uh, presentation. Now we will uh, open the floor for any questions. Please, anyone have any, uh, any questions, just raise your hand and we'll ask, uh, you can ask your, the Professor, Professor uh, Aziz your question. I know there are some of you who write your, the question in, in the chat, but uh, the chat is rolling, so I can't catch up uh, your question. So please, uh, if you can just raise your hand, so it will be better. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yara? Uh, if you unmute your mic, please. Yara Al Ahmed, please unmute your mic so we can hear you. Uh, Yara, you need to unmute your mic so we can hear you. Your mic is uh, mute. Yes, go on. Hello. Yeah, hello. Thank you very much, doctors. 
I'm sorry. It's actually, it's by mistake. Maybe I raised my hand, but uh, I'd like to thank the doctor. Thanks a million, doctor, for this uh, amazing presentation. Uh, it opens our eyes for what to, to head ourselves, what to do and uh, during our, this long journey. Thank you very much, doctors. Thank you so much, Yara. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, Riham, Riham Ali. Yeah, uh, first of all, let me thank uh, the presenter, Dr. Aziz. I would like to ask you, I'm a, I am a PhD student and I would like to ask if I can receive funds for publication, for uh, publish, publishing my paper in um, a journal. Will it be covered by my university or not? The second question that I have is, um, can I submit a paper to conference even if it has not been published? Thank you. Thank you, Riham. Now, in answering your first question in terms of funding, you will need to check with your institution. Some institutions do provide uh, support for uh, publication in terms of proofreading your work, as well as uh, paying for submission fees. So you will need to double check uh, with your uh, institution. And secondly, uh, sorry, I can't remember the sec second questions. Uh, Riham? It's regarding the presenting for a conference. Can I present oh, even yes, if my yes. paper hasn't published? Of course, yes, sorry about that. Of course, you, 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 you're welcome to present your work. Uh, in uh, conferences prior to submitting uh, the paper. And this is, uh, in fact, the best way in polishing your paper because by presenting at these conferences, you would be able to receive uh, constructive uh, feedback uh, from colleagues. And this is how you take forward and improve your papers. By all means, uh, you know, uh, present your papers at these different conferences. And also as a editor of a journal, I would uh, look at whether your paper has been circulated. Remember the, the notion that I mentioned to you just now, okay, you need to test your ideas. You need to test your ideas rigorously, repeatedly, okay? Make sure your con contribution is robust before you submit your papers to uh, any high rank, good quality journals. Thank you. I think, Professor, this is the main idea of the conference to, to present our paper and to know how to develop and improve the idea of uh, the paper. Yeah. yeah. Any other question, Riham? No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, Professor Aziz, if you allow me to add, uh, as uh, Riham asked about the support and fund, uh, in my PhD, I, uh, I had fund more than $25,000 uh, by different uh, uh, organizations in America and uh, uh, Europe and also in UK. Uh, so I think the best idea uh, or uh, maybe the good opportunity, uh, if you are an early career or PhD, most of the uh, conference, they have some fund uh, to give you, uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, give you to, you know, to present in conferences and also to invite you in high rank, uh, 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 sorry, in high rank uh, conference like American Accounting Association, European Accounting Association, BAFA, and so on. So, and also try to be a member in those uh, association like the American Accounting Association, European Accounting Association, and BAFA. You will have a big opportunity to, you know, uh, have uh, those uh, funds. Anil? Hello, uh, Professor, uh, I am from India. Uh, I am doing some work, my PhD work in classification shifting. 
so uh, can you just suggest some topics in which uh, i can easily publish so like uh, earnings management classification shifting so whether i should take the uh, case study mode or uh, whether i will do some empirical work if you can shed some light thank you i this require another lecture <laughs> but i'm happy to provide you a brief uh, suggestion um conducting a case study with a uh, empirical analysis require different set of uh, skill and uh, it will also uh, provide a different implications now in case studies you are investigating a given organization in detail okay uh, so there's pro and cons with that approach uh, all my research uh, covers a large data set okay uh, i conduct an empirical analysis uh, using a large data set now <clears throat> um in term of uh, classification shifting this is one of the method in financial reporting quality um, to be able to operationalize the technique the uh, estimation uh, tools you need to be able to run a re regression and in running a regression it requires large uh, samples or large data set so I would advise you to move away from uh, conducting case studies and uh, use a large data set, for example, uh, you know, uh, using uh, companies uh, domicile in India or in South uh, Asia, okay? Because that would be more relevant, more appropriate rather than conducting uh, a case study. Thank you. I hope that helps. Uh, true, sir. But uh, uh, you know, uh, when you want to study classification shifting or earning management by companies, you need to take data from the auditing firms. And the auditing firms, they generally do, don't give up their uh, information or they are like dubious or they for India also um, I do my research um, the institute I do they don't have that much funding and it's very difficult and we have some ready-made cases like you know Satyam scam and all these in India corporate governance scams so it's easy to get to you know do some work in case studies then uh, I feel yeah, depending on your data availability, if you feel that you the data is available, uh, you can go ahead. But I know many papers that uh, conduct this type of research uh, using secondary data. Okay, what I mean by that, if you have access to financial statement. Okay, statement of financial position or balance sheet and income statement. Okay, you would be able to uh, estimate okay, the classification shifting from uh, this financial statement without having to go to a uh, audit firm. Okay, so that's that's that's, and there there's a lot of papers that uh, look at classification shifting uh, out there. Okay, if you go to Google Scholar, you can find those papers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Anil. Bilal? Hi, Bilal. Hi, Professor Aziz. Hi, Ahmed Qattan. Thank you so much for having this informative sessions. We really all need it as we are in academia and our career is 
persisting in academia. Uh, I'm here not having a specific question, but maybe I would add something to my fellow colleagues who are going to join academia or already they are in early stage in academia, that we all has, have to have always the positive mindset. Also, we have to always surround ourselves with only quality people. And most importantly, we need to enhance our communication skills. Our career is most importantly depending on our communication skills. Why? Because once we open our mouth, we tell the world who we are. And the last point that I would like to tell you about that is all we have to surround ourselves with great people who will lift us up, who will mentor us, and who will help us to achieve success in our career. Because alone, we can't achieve what we are going to achieve. And may you please allow me to uh, extend my thanks and pay heartfelt gratitude for Professor Aziz Jafar. And it's really an honor that I was one of his own students and he helped me a lot and he shared a lot of my skills. Thank you so much, Professor Aziz. Thank you, Bilal. Uh, thank you, Bilal, for your uh, kind words. Also, there's many, many of uh, your students, uh, Professor Aziz in Kuwait, and also here there is uh, Hamda al -Anizi. Also, she thank you, and she was uh, one of your uh, students in Bangor University, and many other uh, students that they thank you. I'm very happy to meet uh, all my student and ex student, even though it's, uh, this is virtual meeting, but yeah. uh, you know, my students is everywhere from Japan to the US. So it's, as I mentioned to you, it's, it's, it's good to be able to contribute because I believe the more you give, the more you will receive back. This is the multiplier effect, you know? So uh, you need to contribute to the society uh, to uh, students and mentor your colleague, uh, your junior colleague. And, you know, for me, it's, it, it feels good. Yeah. We totally agree. Anon? Assalamu alaikum. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, for welcoming uh, Dr. Aziz. Uh, we waited so long to have uh, this uh, such meeting with him. Uh, I'll have this opportunity to ask uh, two questions. First, do you have a special advice for researchers careers in the Middle East? Uh, this is the first one. The second one, uh, I always um, feel very good in talking to great people and successful uh, icons. Uh, to have the opportunity to ask about their golden tips of running their daily and weekly routine. So if you have any secrets you can share with us, especially in the pandemic, and thank you. Good question, Anan. Thank you very much, Anan. Golden rules, professor. Okay, so the first question in terms of tips, if you are in the Middle East, um, what I can recommend you is to be global. Look, the world is becoming more and more smaller and more global, and we are uh, practically connected. I mean, this is the blessing of the uh, pandemic. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now able to, to, to deliver these seminars from my, uh, from my living room, you know? And I've got audience uh, everywhere. Uh, from the Far East to Middle East to even here in the UK. So um, you will need to think global uh, when, you, when, when, when you embark in a research, okay? Uh, you will need to be able to connect to a big conversation. What is the big debate in your research area? Okay, it's not limited to Middle East. Of course, it's, it's nice to have a local implication, but if you can think bigger than your uh, 
your 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 local surrounding that would be better because someone in the US someone in the Canada if they were they were to read your research paper okay you would need to be able to uh, to tell them where, uh, that your research implication is not only applicable to the Middle East, but also globally. Okay, so that's my first uh, tip in terms of regardless whether you are in the Middle East or in the Far East, anywhere, you need to think global. When you conduct research, okay, make sure your research has global implication. How you contribute to this big debate, okay? Now, your second question relating to routine, I don't have uh, secret uh, tips to this, but uh, basically, okay, uh, you need to love what you work, okay? You need to love your job, okay? Being able to, uh, to, to, to love what you're doing would uh, mitigate a lot of uh, you know because I treat my my work as my uh, as expensive hobbies. Okay, this is my hobbies. Okay, meeting people, doing research. Uh, sometimes I spend hours and hours uh, uh, analyzing data. Like last night until midnight, I was uh, doing this uh, programming in Stata. So you need to love what you're doing. Okay. And these will become your routine and stay focused, okay? Because during the current pandemic and uh, while we are uh, working from home, uh, there is a lot of distraction, but you need to be positive, okay? Uh, my kitchen is just two seconds away from my office here. So there is a tendency to visit, uh, you know, my kitchen more frequent, but uh, as long as you have your 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 routine and you you love what you're doing, uh, that what make you going forward. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Anon. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anon. Thank you, Professor Aziz. Anar? Yes, hello. Hello. Thank you very much, Professor Aziz, for the great presentation and for the great information that you have presented. And uh, I have two questions or two things. First of all, uh, if you have, uh, let's say, a specific or let's say that you have a specific, yeah, a plan for doing the research. Okay, sure. so uh, mostly, you know, uh, master students get lost when they do their uh, research and what to choose, like a descriptive method or other kinds of methods when doing the research. So, what do you recommend? I mean, as a, as a professor and since you have experience, do you recommend staying on a one type of uh, let's say, uh, method or style when you write the master, let's say, thesis? Or do you prefer uh, using, um, let's say, one more than, um, more than one, let's say, style, okay? This is the first question. And if you have, um, uh, let's say, the other question is, uh, in conferences, when we want to share this thesis or its unfinished thesis, do you recommend really uh, sharing this or do you think people might steal the idea? So this is the second question and that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anand. Um, okay. Uh, in answering your uh, question, the approach, if you are <clears throat> in the middle of completing your master's dissertations, uh, I reckon uh, it is uh, preferable to stick to one approach, okay? Either empirical or case studies or survey question, you know? If this is a, a, a master's uh, dissertations. Now, if you are working on PhD dissertation, then the approach would be different. You will need to consider a much 
broader uh, methodology and consider which is the best given the scenario, uh, given the circumstances that you work in. Okay, so there are different level of uh, approaches that you can adopt. Uh, if you are an academician, okay, in academia, of course, you will need to broaden your skills, okay? And these need to be continuous. For example, when I started my PhD, okay, I have certain set of skills in statistic. And over time, if you fail to renew these skills, it become outdated it become obsolete. So you will need to continuously uh, proactive, okay? Learn new uh, skill set, okay? Learn new methodology and so on. So depends on which stage of uh, career uh, uh, you know, you're in, okay? If you're completing a master's dissertation because of the time constraint, because, because of the word limit, then stick with one of the uh, one of the methodology, and more importantly, as I mentioned uh, repeatedly in my presentations, uh, you will need to understand the literature. Okay, need uh, you need to know the roots of uh, the debates. Okay, your second question about conferences. Okay, uh, whether. Uh, you need to share your ideas or uh, your new ideas. Uh, now, going back to my uh, presentations, okay, uh, you need to test your ideas repeatedly, rigorously, okay, and robust. By sharing your ideas at this various conferences, you will receive feedback, okay? You will receive feedback whether or not your ideas contribute to the wider debate, okay? To the wider uh, conversations, okay? So it is important to test your ideas. And I know your, 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 your anxious, your, uh, that someone, may steal your novel ideas. Now, there is a trade-off, okay? If you were to present your papers, I would present, okay, my papers at the end stage of the work. For example, okay, if your working papers is 90% complete, that is when you should present your papers at these different conferences. Because if you present your papers while working on it, okay, you only complete like 10% or 20% of your, uh, your, your, your papers, then as you mentioned, some uh, presenters or some participant may sort of, I don't like to use that word, okay? Use your ideas, okay? So <clears throat> there are different places where you can present your work. At the in initial stage, okay? Present your work internally, okay? E within your own department, or there is a lot of uh, doctoral colloquium. These are very friendly. When you about to complete your uh, papers, to submit your papers, okay? This is a working paper stage, okay? Then you can circulate uh, your ideas more widely. But, okay, test your ideas, test your contribution repeatedly. Make sure it's robust. Because in order to publish in these high rank journals, okay, your contribution needs to be novel. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, I understand now. Yeah, thank you very much. So yes, I will hopefully stick to one method in my master and then we'll see in the PhD what will happen. But thank you very much for answering the questions and thank you for the great presentation. Thank you.
Thank you, Aina. Uh, going to the Q&A, there's uh, many questions. Asia uh, uh, Tawil, she asked how to develop our professional or, uh, res uh, or research uh, search and network in Google Scholar. So maybe she meant uh, the citations, how to, how to, you know, have more citations and this stuff. Citations um, depends on your research output. The more you uh, produce, the more you publish, the more citation hopefully uh, will follow. So, uh, in these different research network, either Google Scholar or Academia or any other uh, platform, okay? Uh, if you have working papers or, uh, or, or research papers, upload on this platform uh, and that would encourage uh, other researchers to, uh, <clears throat> to read and cite your work, okay? Yeah, uh, Rana, I think uh, you answer her questions regarding. Uh, I am planning to publish a paper from PhD. I think you 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 answered this question. Uh, also, Asia Tawil she asked about. Uh, uh, I didn't understand this sentence on page twenty one. Uh, work life balance. Life. Work life balance. Have a life, <laughs> okay? Uh, you will need to be able to uh, not only focus on your work, but also have a decent life, okay? Otherwise, you will be insane. This is very competitive field, okay? So not only you able to work, but also, you know, uh, look after yourself, look after your family. Enjoy your life. Of course. Jamal, uh, Ajmal, Said. Uh, your mic is mute. Please unmute your mic. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Alaikum, sir. Can you hear, please? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for your valuable presentation. And uh, my question is that the traditional uh, routine work or the coursework of the PhD uh, before pandemic was uh, will be different now after pandemic as online classes and online how much proportion of online uh, activities uh, can eliminate our burden of attendance No. Sorry, could you please rephrase your question? I'm not quite sure. The last part, I'm with you. How much is the law okay. online? How much the portion of uh, our attendances, uh, both of academia and students at, a, uh, at campus, is necessary after COVID, for, especially for master classes and PhD classes? In your point uh, of view, okay. Yes, of course. Uh, this pandemic uh, has uh, provided a new challenge. Okay, uh, at the start of pandemic, pandemic last year, we moved uh, here at Bangor all teaching to online. Now, uh, you know, with the current situation, uh, this the, the spring semester starts in next week and I'm still delivering my lectures online. I would say, okay, as in my presentation, be prepared to be uh, adaptable, to be innovative, okay, and be dynamic. Because after this pandemic, uh, a lot of things will change, okay? Now that uh, this online platform has proved to some extent, uh, work. So a lot of face-to-face uh, -face lectures can be done online. Okay, For me, um, <clears throat> it should not be rega regarded as a substitute. The online should not 
replace the face-to-face -face teaching lectures totally, but it should complement, okay? It should complement the face-to-face -face teaching. In other words, after the pandemic, I would, uh, I would imagine that uh, a lot of uh, department, a lot of institution will combine both, mo both uh, mode of uh, delivery, okay? On top of face-to-face -face, uh, lectures, we also uh, be having uh, online lectures as well. So yes, uh, there will be definitely a shift to uh, online delivery, but uh, this face-to-face -face teaching, uh, because you know, uh, based from my experience, a lot of my students asked me uh, last week, are we going to have face-to-face -face teaching? I mean, in current situation, it's impossible. The government, I mean, here in the UK, it is locked down, okay? Uh, I uh, would imagine this will go on until Easter break, until March. So, you know, uh, we still need to continue with uh, this online delivery. Thank you. My, my question was uh, partially, uh, how much por proportion of the studies should be converted on online and how much should remain uh, face to face? The proportion depends on the nature of the subject. Uh, if the subject require, uh, for example, in, in my financial analysis uh, module, it requires students to uh, work on the database, which is only available on site. So in that uh, particular uh, module, okay, uh, we would require students to come back. But in other modules, which uh, allow us to conduct uh, lectures online, you know, uh, I would reckon uh, uh, there would be a higher proportion of lectures uh, to be conducted online. So uh, there is no one magic uh, figures, numbers to give, uh, give you. Uh, it depends on the nature of the modules and program. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ajmal. Uh, uh, Professor Aziz, actually, most of the audience asked about, you know, the research and this stuff. I want to ask you, if you allow me, about teaching. So how we can improve our teaching as uh, doctors and uh, professors? Uh, how we can, you know, deliver our uh, subject in maybe in a better, uh, better style, let's say, or... Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, you know, a lot of my presentation today uh, focus on uh, research part. Of course, teaching is becoming more, is, is very important uh, as part of your academic uh, career because this is how you impart, impart your knowledge. Now, <clears throat> I always, uh, my, my teaching is uh, research led. So, uh, my research work uh, serve as the foundation of my teaching. I always uh, connect uh, the textbook, okay? The, 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 the textbook component would serve as a foundation, okay? And then to be able to, to, to relate to real world, okay? You then bring these various research papers, current research to uh, <clears throat> to your classroom. So my first tip is uh, to ensure that your teaching is current, okay? Uh, how to do that, okay? Uh, you start off by uh, introducing to students concept and definition provided by uh, the core textbook, okay? In each module, there will be core textbook. And after that, okay, after providing all these uh, <clears throat> basic definitions, you will need to supplement with current debates, okay? So current debates, these can be from your papers, from recent published papers, 
what is going on out there, I'm pretty sure, okay, uh, you know, uh, with, with COVID-19 issues, okay, there is a lot of implication, there is a lot of things that, a lot of issues that we can discuss uh, during our lectures. For example, in my first uh, lectures, I'm going to have my first lectures next week. Uh, the module that I'm teaching is advanced financial reporting and regulations. So my first lectures, I will uh, present to students what is the implication of COVID-19 on financial reporting, okay? So this is a huge debate because a lot of companies suffers going concern in terms of measurement, in terms of there is a lot of implication. Uh, so try to connect uh, the subject with current debates. And that will make your lectures uh, more engaged, more current, and try to bring students involved uh, during your discussion. Okay. Uh, what is uh, Professor Aziz Jafar uh, teaching philosophy? The teaching philosophy. Yes. <laughs> this is uh, going back to my uh, teaching in higher education certificate or diploma that I did when I first joined uh, Bangor University. Uh, the philosophy is to <clears throat> to ensure that uh, students, uh, you know, engage, okay? Providing students with uh, current debates, okay? Embarking, uh, you know, uh, current knowledge to students so that they are ready to face the real world because this is future ge generations. You will need to prepare our students to face the real world, okay? Uh, so your lecture should be a mix of theory and applications, okay? Theory is very important, but how do we apply this theory to the real world? So I always bring these two components in my lectures. Okay, what is theory? Theory is very important in, in corporate governance. You need to understand the different theory, different approaches, stakeholders, legitimacy theory, agency theory. What is the implication of this theory to real world? Okay, and how do how can we apply this 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 theory in your real world? So make sure you, your your student understand both the theory and practical implication of your module, then your student would be happy with you. So link the real real life or real world with the with the book world, I think. Of course, of course, yes. This is what I mentioned to you. You start off with the textbook, the core textbook, and then okay, be able to connect those ideas in textbook with real world. Thank you. What is happening around you? Thank you. Anise? If you unmute your mic, please. Uh, Anise, uh, okay. Yeah. Go on. You unmute it again. So sorry, you mute it again. So if you don't mind, unmute your mic so we can hear you. Anis? You need to unmute your mic. We can't hear you. Okay, Bushra. Hello. Hello. Yes. 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 Uh, so, um, good evening, professors. Uh, 
Um, first of all, uh, thank you for the webinar. In fact, I uh, have two questions. The first one, I um, it's about the visibility. Uh, so uh, are there any platform that uh, you can recommend for uh, better visibility for uh, researchers? Uh, in that, I mean a platform on which uh, the researcher can put uh, his uh, uh, published uh, paper, in fact. That is the first question. Second question concerned international conferences online. In fact, I wonder if uh, you can recommend some platform on uh, which we can uh, find out about the calendar of conferences, uh, especially in this uh, period of a pandemic that most of national events are postponed or canceled. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bishra. Um, the first question on visibility, um, there are different platforms I mentioned in, during my presentation that you can register and upload your uh, academic work, uh, for example, uh, Google Scholar, uh, you can upload your working papers uh, as well as your published manuscript on this platform. Uh, there's uh, other SSRN, so you can register to our SSRN or, uh, you know, uh, or, or this different other platform. So Academia, uh, if I, I, will, I, will, I will send <clears throat> a copy of my presentation and during my, in, in my presentation, I've listed down this different platform uh, where you can enhance your visibility. So do register in this platform. And also, uh, as I mentioned just now, uh, you will need to be able to know who are the key players, who are the key authors in your field, uh, what are the current debates and how you can contribute to the debates, okay? How you can contribute to the uh, literature. Uh, secondly, uh, in terms of international conferences, okay? Um, <clears throat> I subscribe to SSRN and uh, as as one of these, uh, there's, uh, again, as I mentioned, this different platform will uh, give you an automatic email if there are uh, upcoming uh, conferences scheduled internationally. And, uh, in, you know, uh, in, 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 in my field, uh, accounting and finance, there are, uh, there are uh, a number of conferences uh, <clears throat> that... Uh, <clears throat> that are organized annually, the British uh, Accounting uh, Association Conferences or BAFA, British Accounting and Finance Association. This is usually in late spring, in May, and then the American uh, Accounting Association in August, okay? Uh, and then the European Accounting Association Conference. Uh, all these conferences uh, this year, will be conducted online. The EAR or European Accounting Association conferences uh, will be again sometimes late spring. Okay, so this platform SSRN or, or uh, you know if you if you Google you would be able to find these various international conferences. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, awesome. Bushra. I actually uh, wrote in the in the chat. Um, yeah. Some of uh, those, which is the professor, uh, professor uh, as he said, which is SRN. Okay, yeah. you just write in Google SSRN. And also, as the professor said, there is association, uh, which is uh, American Accounting Association, European Accounting Association, BAFA, BAM, and Canadian Accounting Association, Australian Accounting Association, and so on. Uh, yeah. Just, just. Um, join any of those association or or just you know um check the the, the their website and there is uh you know what is the con the conferences that they will uh, have also i will uh, share with you all uh, all uh, conferences alert which this website can give you all conferences around the world this month and next or the next month or next year as well so you can uh, uh, register in this uh, any of those conference under your interest 
uh, contact them, uh, send, you, send uh, them your paper or your poster, and you can uh, join uh, their conferences. Thank you. Thank you, professors. Thank you. Anil? Hello, one more question, sir. I wanted to know how we can write uh, uh, this research, uh, how we can write uh, statement of purpose and cover letter for assistant professor if I'm applying. What needs to be mentioned and what need not be mentioned? Uh, this is job application, cover letter. Uh, yes, yes. Again, this uh, will require another web webinar. <laughs> but basically what you write in your cover letter uh, should reflect uh, your uh, interest. For example, if you are applying for assistant professor, okay, uh, depending on the post, whether the post is research focus or teaching focus, you will uh, you will you will need to uh, to, to to highlight your uh, capabilities for uh, if this teaching then okay uh, which subject which module have you taught and uh, whether uh, you fit with the organization okay uh, what I meant by that okay how you see yourself uh, contribute to the institution that you're applying for and and, and how you suit to the position uh, advertised in terms of providing a uh, research gap in the existing institutions or teaching gap, filling teaching gap, and so on. So basically highlight uh, your uh, capabilities, your achievements, okay, uh, as well as, uh, you know, uh, what you can contribute to the organization. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. <clears throat> thank you, Anil. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Aziz, for your contribution in uh, ITAR group and wonderful, interesting, and useful uh, webinar. We really enjoy it and we like uh, all the information that you give us and it will be so useful, mostly for early career and PhD student. Also, as you, as you give us the steps for, you know, to improve the teaching philosophy or teaching uh, style. So uh, I really want to thank you personally for everything uh, and uh, for uh, this webinar and hope it won't be the last one. It will be beginning of a series of uh, uh, Professor Aziz uh, seminars. Uh, if you have any uh, last word, uh, Professor Aziz. Thank you very much again, uh, Dr. Al Khatan, and thank you very much, everyone, for attending this uh, seminar. I wish you all the best uh, in your undertaking. And if you have any question, any queries, uh, feel free to uh, give me a shout. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Professor Aziz. Uh, Next, uh, next, the next week uh, webinar will be with uh, Dr. Tarq Muntasar from uh, Coventry uh, University in UK in 23rd of uh, January with the title, The Determinant of the uh, Web uh, Corporate Social Responsibility Disclosure of Multinational uh, Companies uh, Toward Host Countries Inside of uh, and century and uh, political uh, insensibility. Uh, I will post it uh, tonight. So if you want to attend uh, this webinar, you can join uh, those uh, accounts of ETAR that I uh, mentioned it in the in the chat and uh, most will come. Also, I want to thank uh, you for uh, joining uh, today webinar and all over the world, uh, all uh, PhD students, uh, colleagues and different university around the world. And also, once again, thank you so much, Professor Aziz for accepting uh, 
uh, our invitation and give us uh, from uh, your time and uh, effort. Thank you so much. And uh, see you uh, next week. Thank you. Salam. So.